Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Slay. Coming off the coattails of yesterday's success in Do 2, I'm going to go ahead and try a hard level today. Today we'll be playing Fanau. Fanau appears to be very indistinct. Other than this large territory peninsula in the north east, and a smaller peninsula in the north, it is an extremely square level. That should make this an interesting play. I do see a potential opportunity. Oh, good, we have two men in here. So a potential opportunity to actually gain this territory to the north. But that may take a minute before we can get out there, and that yellow and dark brown are both going to have plenty of territory in that peninsula. Now here's a good question. With this territory, should I take it to the east or the west? If I take it to the east, there's a good chance I can meet it up with the territory that I just placed my peasants in. However, if I secure the west, which I think I'm going to go ahead and do, I see a greater opportunity there in having my back against the sea, which is one of the biggest strategies you can employ in this game. Looks like we'll have a nice big territory here as well. Yeah, that's pretty huge. But the yellow guy directly below me, he is going to be problematic as well. So right off the bat, we've already got some large territories, but I'm sure we're not going to be the only ones. Oh, look at that. We've already been split apart. So to try and play strategically. I am definitely going to be focusing as much of my potential energy as possible on making sure that none of the other players has an opportunity to gain a foothold. I'm going to take that back. I'm going to go ahead and take these territories here. I'm going to go right for the jugular. Try and secure that small peninsula there. So that guy's got nowhere to go, and that guy's got nowhere to go. Of course, we have this guy building a castle. And of course, there was no way for us to connect those two, these two territories here. I see potential problems here with these dark brown territories. So let's make sure they get split up. Do see opportunities here to grow. Here as well. Nothing there. That strategy did not work as I was hoping. That could be a bad sign. We could be off to a another ugly play today. So my biggest challenge here is this guy. I've got to secure the middle of my territory or I will not be gaining resources after each turn. I do see a potential opportunity here to not only link these guys up, but also to steal territory away from this medium green guy. Make my territory back up there and try and steal my way into that peninsula. Good, that's exactly what I was hoping would happen here. So split his territory up, take that back. And we gotta use... Use your smarts when you're splitting territories up because you know every time you split a territory a new village is made. Go and play defensively here. Ooh, can I connect those territories there? Now we've lost almost all of our army in these few territories. 
but we're starting to gain army back in these. Trees, of course, always a problem. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these territories get split again. Just like that. Nowhere for him to go. One more turn, we'll have a castle. Same thing here. This gets split. But we split them right back. Use your castle to your advantage. Remember, it's going to take a knight to destroy that peasant now, simply because he's standing next to a castle. Alright, moving on. Good, now we have a castle to work with here. That's going to take a minute till we get another peasant. Hopefully we get him before he, any of those guys decide to come and storm us. Now we have Link territory here, which is very good. Put a castle up in there to defend our northern territory. Go ahead and try and take this small defensible peninsula all the way in the northwest. And that's it for now. So good news, we still have our castle. Bad news, it's about all we got there, right over there. Here, we have an opportunity to really irritate Brown, but that's about all we're going to do is irritate him. Let's see how our armies are doing. Do I have an army enough? Do I have army enough to spare a spearman? I think strategically I must. Just like that. And then we're going to use our peasants to prevent the onslaught of trees. Cross our fingers and move to the next turn. All right. That's looking decent. We did lose our spearmen down there. That's a problem. So we'll see what we can take from light brown here. Continue our onslaught on the forest. And look around. We got a spearman who needs to be put to good use. Very little that can be done here at the moment. Almost certainly going to need a knight in order to take out that dark green territory there. Put a castle right there. Continue, continue to keep us protected. Moving on. So we did lose some territory in the south. We still have a castle over there, but it looks like we got a knight. Dark green, definitely going to be a problem. Hopefully dark green and medium light brown fight amongst themselves for a little while, though. Now we got 21 units per turn now, which is extremely good. We now have almost complete control of this northern, as small as it is, northern peninsula. That is extremely good. Now I'm going to take a step back because I want to have at least one spearman to defend that area there. All right, he's coming from the south. Extra 17 units. All right, thinking about this, if I put a knight right there, and a peasant, and then a spearman, I'm out of luck. Even doing it that way, there's not much I can do. So I'm going to go ahead and go straight back, all the way back. And just put a spearman there to protect the territory. And move these spearmen out out and around this way to gain more territory. 
See if I can irritate him a little bit. Put a castle right there to protect. Chop down another tree. Definitely going to need a knight. I need multiple knights. So with a knight, I can move there to defend and we'll be ready on the next turn to take out that castle. With these spearmen, I can minimize his territory there. I have an opportunity to put another castle in. I think I'll do that right there. Continue to earn more territory there. Still with just one knight, I'm limited. But I have now effectively taken out that light brown territory there. Got another castle. We'll defend there. And finally got another unit. Probably too little too late. I realize now I have really been focusing only on my own territory, not paying any attention to anything else that's going on. That is a problem. But I don't see any other way around it. Alright. Now, if I want to go ahead and run the gamut, gamble here of putting in another knight... I have now a huge army compared to the size of my territory, but I have split that light green unit up. Look at those castles. That is a ridiculous amount of castles. And now he is dead, and I'm still alive, and still in the positive. So I have got to do something about these guys coming on the south. So that's what I'm going to do there. And as good as that is, with this dark green guy attacking me here, I'm not going to be able to do much anywhere else either. So I'm going to have to take him out as well. And that's not bad. Good. Now with him out of the picture. Him, of course, being the spearman, the territory is still there. We can at least start moving on. Now I'm going to run one little gamble here. I'm going to go ahead and say that we can take one turn to shore up defenses. Oh, that was a mistake. The spearman peasant there and then the spearman there. And then we're going to need to start moving to the east. Because as important as it is to have lots of territory, it is almost more important to ensure that your enemy has very little territory. There's not much I'm able to do here. So I'm going to put a castle right there. That should prevent him, should I say, from getting any opportunity to split my territory. Good, that's exactly what it did. So that being done, oh, he left a vulnerable spot for himself there. Now it is almost definitely time. Keep that territory split. I'm watching my western front as well as my eastern. Tree's always a problem. Common theme in these last few episodes we've had here. Okay. 
All right. So yellow is a bit of a problem. Dark green is a bit of a problem. Dark brown is going to be giving dark green a bit of a hard time there. So I'm just going to simply secure myself. Make sure hmm, light green is a potential problem over here. So I'm going to secure myself, make sure that I'm well defended against the enemies. I will let brown and dark green duke it out. Just throw one castle in there to protect some of that territory. And then make sure that I've got good resources and I don't find myself wishing I had deforested before it was too late. Good, so now you can see he pretty much left me alone. However, I made a mistake when I thought that one night would be enough to secure this southwestern territory. And unfortunately, where we stand now, one night is not enough either. So I have to ask myself, do I want to throw three knights into my mix? As much as I don't like that, I th am afraid that is possibly our only option. Just to be safe, I'm going to put a castle right there. I'm going to put me a spearman. No. There. I'm going to put a castle there. And that should be fine. Oh, good. Definitely can handle three knights. Tell you, this game would be a lot easier if you understood the numbers, but I also think if you understood the numbers, it would be a lot less intuitive and would probably be a little less fun. So now, I've got me a really good chance here to mess up this yellow army. I'm going to go ahead and let brown and green fight amongst themselves. I'm going to mess up this yellow army pretty bad. So I'm going to need to spend one night to get there. And I'm going to... Well, I said I could mess him up pretty bad, but it's looking like he's well too well... He's entirely too well castled. So I'm going to take a step back. Rather than doing it that way, I'm just going to do this. Now he has potential now, quite a bit of potential. I'm going to recastle myself there and there. Ha! That was enough. He was overextended. So now we've got this big area with just a couple of castles in it. This is the perfect opportunity to do the honeycombing peasant rush. Now that leaves a little more open area than I'd like, but they're all spearmen defended. He'd need a knight, and he's not going to have enough to get a knight. So my army stays completely intact. While... His army... Gonna take a long time to come back. And those two knights in that green territory right there, no way they're gonna make it. And now you can see that the dark brown unit their dark brown team has made a horrible mistake in opening themselves up like that. They are gone now.
So now it's just a matter of making sure that there are no large territories remaining. And then you'll go ahead and get to surrender. And by that get to surrender, I of course mean arrive at surrender. Not you will be allowed to surrender. Silly distinction, but I wanted to make myself abundantly clear. Now this is a challenging situation because we've got so many castles floating around this area that you really need a great deal of knights in order to get through any of this territory quickly enough. Oh, left myself vulnerable because I was overconfident. Lost some army there. That's a problem. A very, very small problem, but a problem nonetheless. So I will bring my knights out this way and use my peasants to honeycomb the last remaining large territory. Let's see if I can even bring some of these troops around to double back on themselves. And I anticipate surrender when I hit this button and I was mistaken. But the army remains intact, so it will only be a matter of another turn or two. Perhaps this territory here in this, yes, definitely this territory in the northern end of this large peninsula is part of the reason that people refuse to surrender. Frankly, I understand I hardly ever surrender in this game. I typically will fight till the bitter end, no matter how hopeless it looks. Now we have a knight coming down this way, and he definitely has the resources to spend on that. However, he left himself vulnerable. Spearmen easily cut off his supply lines. I'm thinking that at the end of this turn, we should be a surrender. And again, I am wrong. Perhaps I'm just a little too optimistic. A simple mopping up action. And there's our surrender. 31 turns. Definitely a challenge. Thoroughly enjoyed Fanau, or however you pronounce that. Once again, thank you all very much for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.